Lots of people think that following your passion is completely irresponsible, that it's just going to leave you broke. It's going to leave you penniless. What do you say to people who think that? For everybody who says, oh, oh, immature wanting is for losers. You're never going to be rich and successful. Well, look at Steve Jobs. The guy freaking moved to India to bounce from ashram to ashram meditating. He went and lived on what? An apple farm. He became a hippie for a while. He dropped out of Reed College to learn calligraphy because he really wanted to learn calligraphy and not you know, what his parents wanted him to learn. But all of that came together. All of these became breadcrumbs that led to his destiny. Mature wanting is the breadcrumbs that lead you to your destiny. Steve followed his heart, studied calligraphy. He followed his heart. He went to India. All of this came together and helped him start the company that became Apple. And in his Stanford commencement address in 2005, he said this, always follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know who you are to become. Okay, let's take Steve Jobs' commencement speech. How would you respond to someone like, um, like Cal Newport? In his book, So Good They Can't Ignore You, he writes that Steve Jobs didn't follow his passion, that he had a chance to sell some computer parts. Like he, he had computer parts. He went to go sell them. The guy said, I don't want these parts. I'd rather have a working computer. So Jobs was like, okay, I can make more money. And so he just, he just was out to make a buck. And so on one side, we have you know, Jobs saying in the commencement speech, follow your heart, follow your passion, go on, you know, go on and do that stuff. And on the other side, we have people like Cal Newport who suggest that it's completely revisionist history. That it's foolish for us to think that we can go out there, we can follow our passion, we can follow our heart, and it's all going to work out somehow. Ultimately, see, these theories come from two different worldviews. There is the purely logic, empirical, um, Newtonian worldview, right, where everything is, is purely cause and effect. And then there's the worldview that we are more than just physical beings, that we have a spirit, we have a soul, we have intuition. You see, we have an intuition. We have a soul that is a guiding force moving us towards who we are destined to be. Don't fucking shut that down. And anybody who tells you intuition is woo-woo, no, they're just a freaking idiot. There's so much evidence that intuition is real. This is why I disagree with Cal Newport, because Cal Newport goes for a purely materialistic, physical understanding of the world, devoid and absent of what it truly means to be human. I actually had to put Cal Newport's book down halfway through. Nothing against him or anything else, but I found it really sad. As I was reading it, I was like, wow, this goes so against what I've experienced and so against what I believe. And for our listeners, Cal Newport's approach is just like, listen, you know, following your passion doesn't take you anywhere. Like the, the answer is to develop skill sets and to allow your skill sets and your skill set development to take you further and to be really, really good at something. Be so good at it that people will want you not following your passion just because your passion decides to take you off to some far land. And I found it so, um, I don't know, I, just, I was sad. I was sad reading it. It just felt like maybe the romance of life or the magic of what could be or the hope of a future yet untold was like being taken away from me. And, and I, until you said that, I didn't realize why I was so sad by reading this book, if you know what I mean. Right. So here's what's happening in the Western world. Martial artists, masters, work with an intuition and an energy that is crazy, not only perceiving information, but sending energy. I'm sure you've heard of Bruce Lee and his one-inch punch. All of this fall under a concept called perceptual diversity, which is the ability to sense, to feel, to listen beyond our five senses. But in the Western world, this is shut down because we start to believe that everything that cannot be proven by science is somehow wrong. Now, the funny thing is this, intuition has been proven by science. Meditation has been proven by science, but still scientists. And I got into this debate with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson said, no, 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 intuition isn't real. There's no science for it. No bullshit, Neil, there is science for it. But it is this stubborn Western idea that only thing that's real is what we see with our five senses that makes us shut down to these, these ideas that we are souls having a human experience. Now, the reason so many people in the Western world, including Neil deGrasse Tyson, are so resistant to it, is something called the pre-trans fallacy. So this is a word coined by Ken Wilber, the great philosopher. And he says, people who exist in the rational state of awareness, which is, you know, Silicon Valley, Wall Street, rational state of awareness, they are unable to see um, anything beyond the rational state. So they look at, they look at magical thinking, and then they look at meditation, 
intuition, and they put that in the same boat. Now, of course, one is magical thinking. It's pre-rational, but the other one is actually transrational. It is the next era of human development, intuition, the idea of energy healing, the idea of working with the body's energy system, um, the idea of manifesting. These are transrational. But by lumping into the same bucket, you suddenly shut down to it. If you fall for the pre-trans policy, what typically happens is you shut yourself down to future human potential. And I think that's what happens to some writers like Carl Newport. They are completely resist, and also Neil deGrasse Tyson, completely resistant to these ideas. The reason I'm so open to them is because I've studied this. I've seen people do amazing things. I've seen remarkable acts of healing. I've seen remarkable acts of intuition. I've experienced this in my life. It's so important for us to have an open mind about this. And when you do, you start realizing that there are so many tools at your disposal to help you create this, for lack of a better word, the life of your dreams, than, than the purely rational way, rational, me mechanistic way of approaching life. If you're digging the conversation I'm having with Vishen Lakiani from Mind Valley, you've got to hear the whole talk. We break down why hard work isn't enough, why he walked away from a multi million dollar VC backed company, and how really the seed for everything great in his life was planted by just chasing down his passions. Check out the whole talk.